Hello and welcome to this month's drawing tutorial. This month we're going to draw a portrait of a woman and we're going to work in a very step-by-step -step basic way so that it will be an easy process for even the beginner to follow. Attached to the tutorial this month is going to be a copy of this photograph. So if you want to draw along with me and make the exact same portrait, feel free to do so. Otherwise, just use the techniques that you use in the course and apply them to your own portrait. This is a really typical photo in that while the coloring and lighting is okay, the background is really cluttered and somewhat distracting. And so the first step that I've done is to make a copy of the photograph and enlarge it, focusing on just the key elements of the face. Once that is done, then I'm going to keep this close by as reference for my drawing and make myself some guidelines that are roughly the same proportion as the original reference material. Now if I wanted to be really precise I could do that and make a grid. If you don't want to be quite as precise then you can just eyeball the center points on both the length and the width of the photo. Now when I eyeball similar marks on my reference material then I automatically have some guidelines that I can refer to to help me place the largest shapes of the portrait. But with that done, start with your largest simple shapes. In this case, we have her head and it's very definitely an oval shape. So start with the oval. Let me darken that a little bit to make it easier for you to see. But on your paper, don't darken your oval any more than that. It's going to be hard to erase and these are just guidelines. Then I'm going to make a guideline for the neck and the shoulders. There's the first shoulder and the second shoulder comes down and intersects the picture about here. Now when I place those lines, I'm looking at this point of intersection. So that's how you're using this outer grid. Now once her head is in place, then you're going to draw the guidelines for the face. Notice she's not looking straight at you. The line that goes between her eyes is off to the left of the head because her head is slightly turned. But her head is straight, so her eyes are still going to be in the center of the head it's just a matter of where does the nose wind up on the face. So first make a guideline for the nose and then find the center of the head and make a guideline for the eyes. Now I'm going to sketch in the outer shape of her hair. Okay, so step one, make your largest shapes. Step two, make the guidelines on your shapes. Step three now is going to be to place the features on the guideline. For this, I like to use a piece of scratch paper. It doesn't have to be large. One edge of it is mechanically straight. That's important. Now I'm going to put the paper on the larger copy of the photograph because it's easier to see where things fall. And the first thing I want to measure is the eye distance away. Usually, if the head is looking straight forward, the eyes are one eye's width apart. So in other words, if this were my head, and the eyes are right in the center, and the person is looking straight forward, this would be an eye, there'd be an eye's width, and then you'd see the second eye. From the bottom of the eye, to the top of the nostril is another eye's width. So you would use your measuring paper. You'd mark down the length of one eye. That gives you an eye width. And you'd measure from the bottom of the eye, one eye width down. And you'd make a little guideline right there for the top of the nostrils. If you make a dotted line from the inside of both eyes down, you'll find the edge of the nostrils, generally speaking. 
So giving yourself these guidelines is a really efficient way of starting the picture. Then you can refine from there. But here's my person. Here's the width of the eye. And I can see that from the outer corner of this eye to the outer corner of this eye is one eye width, even though she's not looking straight forward. Now this eye width, however, goes from the edge of the face to the corner of the eye. So now visualize what's happening. She doesn't actually have one eye that is half again as short as the other eye. But when your face turns at an angle like this, then part of this eye is covered up by the bridge of the nose, and this is retreating into the distance, and so it's going to appear to be shorter. That's why you don't just always draw two eyes that are equal length, no matter how the head is turned, you use your guidelines and map out the exact length of both first. Then I need to just guess on the approximate length of the first eye here. If it were that long, then the second eye would start here and the edge of the face would be exactly where it is. So this seems to be a good eye length so far. And now let me go back to my drawing and see where her nose lies in terms of that bottom of the eye rule. Okay, here is one eye width down from the bottom of the eye. You can see it goes right to the top of her nostril. So now I'll go to the drawing, make a guideline, and that's going to be the top of the nostril guideline. From the line that I just drew that is the top of the nostril, it's one eye length down for her to the bottom of this upper lip, which is good news because it's another precise measurement that I can use and know exactly where that upper lip is supposed to fall. Then it's an eye width down to the top of the chin and about three quarters of an eye width down to the bottom of the chin. So I can already tell here that I'm going to have to extend the length of my head. This should be the top of the chin and then her chin should end about here. So I'm going to need to adjust that. So I have measured now the entire face in terms of eye length. The next step is to draw those features within my guidelines. So first make an eye. So this is the outer lid. I'm just going to kind of sketch it in like this to begin with. And then the line is bisecting both eyes in about the middle and that will keep them level in the drawing. Okay, then I'll do those guidelines for the edge of the nose. So this line is the interior edge and about here is the exterior. I know that this line is the top of the upper lip. I need to know where the mouth edges fall though. So the edge of this mouth is right in line with the edge of the nose. The edge of this mouth bisects the center of the eye, which is typical. So if I come back, here's the center of the eye, and this one should end about here. So now I'm starting to make a kind of box for my mouth to go in. And once I have that box drawn, then I can sketch my lips inside of that box. And this is the easiest way to make a mouth. The other question is, do I have this line right? So once again, I'm going to measure it in terms of the eye width. There's one eye from the edge of this eye to the beginning of the hairline. Then the rest of the hair is another eye plus a half. So I was pretty close on the outer edge of the hair here. We have things basically put in place, but now we need to make them look like the correct features that we see in the photograph. I'm going to start erasing those guidelines, draw that nose with a little bit more certainty, and I need to reshape the top of the head because right now it looks kind of like a moon face. I'm using an H pencil and I'm just working with short choppy strokes that are fairly light and easy to erase. 
never, never, never start adding the tone until your outlines of the features are right. I'm going to add her irises and the pupils. The highlight is really important because it helps direct where the eye is looking. Then I'm still keeping these strokes in the eye fairly sketchy, but I'm going to erase what I have. But even after erasing, I can still see where the line was, and so it's not a very big deal to put it back in in the right place, just with a slightly different shape. And you see how I'm just slowly, slowly fixing those basic sketchy features and making them this woman's individual features. Okay, so there's just a little bit of picky detail work that I need to do in the features. Now I'm going to do a little bit more work on it off camera and come back when it's time to erase the guidelines. Now what I recommend doing is standing back and looking at the picture with fresh eyes from a viewer's distance. Then put your reference material really close and let your eye travel back and forth rapidly between the two. You're looking for anything that just doesn't seem quite right. And just do that for a while, making adjustments as you go. And every time you've made an adjustment, start that process over again, looking back and forth, back and forth. Because so it's a lot harder to make adjustments to a drawing that has tone in place than to a simple line drawing like this is right now. So this is where you want to make changes if changes need to be made. Once you're completely satisfied, then you can move on to the next step, which is adding some tone. To start adding tone, I'm going to stay with my H pencil, and I'm going to work from the top down. I'm trying to work on the largest shapes at first, so you're not just going to start adding tone to the pupil. You're going to start with something a lot bigger than that. So I'm going to start by putting some directional strokes in the hair, and this is so I can establish the growth pattern. Notice I'm not going to shade against the grain or the growth. So over here, I'm going to start adding that dark shape working from the scalp and then down to show how it's growing from there. So sometimes the hair comes down like this. Here it swoops into a wave over her shoulder and it just has to be vague in general. Take your time and don't scribble back and forth while you're putting in the hair. That's obviously going to have to be darkened and blended a lot darker. But now let's move on to the skin tone. In the skin tone, I'm using the pencil on the side and I'm just adding a base tone first. A lot of this is going to be lost in the blending phase. But this just gives me something to work with. It sets a base. So the highlights are going to be lighter than this, the darks are going to be darker than this. This is the midtone, and you'll notice that I'm putting it on in one direction. I'm using light strokes of the pencil on the side, and I'm going over everything as one big piece versus shading around the eye, and shading around the chin, and shading around the nose. The skin is everywhere and I'm adding the base tone everywhere. And once that base tone is in place, I'm going to move to either a chamois cloth or a large stomp or tortillon that's just rolled paper. A chamois cloth is just that, it's a piece of chamois. And the way that you would use this is wrap it around your finger and then just go in everywhere that you've established base tone or even in the hair follow the same direction and just blend those tones together with a chamois cloth. The problem with the chamois cloth is it picks up a lot of tone. That's why I like it for the first pass though because then I get rid of all of the strokes and I still have a pretty well established base tone on the paper. So this is the first pass of blending. So now, step one of blending is complete. Step two of blending is to go back into the picture with a softer pencil and start darkening up the areas that are darker. Here you can see the process of filling in with darker tone. 
I'm using the pencil on the side. Notice the overhand hold that I have on the pencil versus the underhand, which is appropriate for making lines. Now I'm going to proceed to the rest of the face. To protect the rest of the drawing, I'm going to lay down a clean piece of paper and then I am going to go into the darkest places of the face, add a little bit more detail with a 4B sharp pencil. So I'm darkening around the pupil, I'm darkening the iris a bit, I'm darkening the line of the eyelids, but notice I'm not outlining. Draw your line as a line and then use your blending tool to darken one side. So you still have a sharp division and yet the line is not visible as a line. Don't darken everything as dark as it needs to go yet. You're just trying to get all of the features worked up to the next stage so that you can see how they look with a little bit of tone on them. Because shapes look different if they have tone versus there being outlines. I'm still keeping my shading light enough so that I can go back and make alterations if needed. When I've added just a touch more tone here and there, I'm going to pick up another stomp and I'm going to blend in those areas of the smaller details. Now I'm adding some shading with this stomp to areas that I need to be kept really subtle, like under the ball of the nose and the upper eye, places like that. Notice how I'm using some firm circle strokes so that I blend the tone and disguise my strokes at the same time. So now at this point I can make a better determination if things need to be moved around. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and make some adjustments and then I'll come back and we'll push it forward further. Now I've made some adjustments to the nose and the lips and I'm more confident now that I can move forward to the next step. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did before, only now since I'm a little more confident with the placement of the features and the shape of the features, I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit more darkly. And then I'm using an H pencil on the side and I'm going to pick out more carefully this time the shadow shapes that run over the features. And as I work, I'm not just shading one feature at a time. I'm squinting at the reference material and I'm looking for shapes of shadows that are large and run over the entire face. So if you look here, there's a shadow that goes all the way from under the chin, up the mouth, up into the nose, and extends under the under eye and into the upper eye. That's all one big piece, and to make my shading as smooth as possible, I am putting that in as one big piece. So I start at the top, I'm going to go right over the glasses, I'm going to drop in the shadow next to the eye, into the under eye, beside the nose, working down now under the nose, goes into the lip, and now into the chin. See by working that way you unify the piece and you increase your realism because in reality shadows don't stop when they come to the ends of features. They splay over the entire form. I'm just going over the piece and I'm darkening up what needs to be pushed a little bit farther. Then when you've added the tone, go back in with your stomp or tortillon and do the same process that you did before. I'm using little circle strokes and I'm blending those tones smooth. This is the portrait after the first stage of blending is complete. So now we're going to move on to the next step which is actually not really a separate step, it's just more of the same. Because after you blend everything once, you're going to go in with a softer pencil and you're going to darken up the smaller details in the features. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to add some darks. So one of the big places that needs some more darks is in the hair. Work carefully too because as you darken the hair around the face, you're also carving out the shape of the face. I'll do more of that off camera, but I'm going to also darken the eyebrows and the rim of the glasses. And then what's really going to punch it up is adding detail to the eyes. So I'm going to carefully darken the upper lid, 
not outlining the entire thing, but just darkening up a piece or two of the line here and there. Really darken up that pupil and make sure that you carefully avoid the highlight as you do that. And then add a little bit of darkness to the outside of the iris to give that more shape. Let's see, after you're done with the details in the eye, you're going to come back with your kneaded eraser and you're going to pick out that little highlight caught in the glass. Then it's just a matter of taking the time to do that same process everywhere. And this is the last stage of the drawing. So I'm just taking my time, adding the additional darks. I've already added tone and blended it twice, so this is the third pass. And in this pass, you focus on the smaller details. So working on a drawing is kind of like building a funnel. You start with the vaguest, largest shapes, and then as you work down in more and more passes, you work on fewer things in greater detail. Now, for adding those darks in the hair a little bit faster and more efficiently, in some places where the dark shadows are solid, I'm going to use the pencil on the side and build up those darks more quickly like this. And sometimes to keep the hair more distinct as a different texture than the skin, I put down the texture with the pencil like this, graphite or charcoal, and then I don't blend it. And that way the hair looks just a little bit more different. Now after working in the hair and doing the detail work in the face that I haven't done, you might want to add some detail to the clothes. Just pick out a few shapes of shadow in the clothes, accent those. If there's a design on the clothing like there is here, you can put that on if you want to. But if you want to do that, save yourself a lot of time and hassle by first establishing the tone of the shirt. Blend it smooth. I'll do that using a chamois cloth. After blending smooth, I might need to add some additional tone focusing on the darkest places just like I did in the face. You can go in with your stomp as a second pass and blend that smooth like this. And then go into it and start adding those details on top. And if you've done it correctly, after you add the details, you'll be done with the shirt. Okay, so that's how you finish up the piece. Add some darks to the hair using a softer pencil on the side. Add the details to the shirt. Add the details to the face with a sharp, soft pencil. Then all you have to do is continue on that way for as long as it takes. It's probably going to be about 20 minutes, and I'll come back to you and show you the finished portrait. All right, here is the finished portrait. Come in just a little bit closer so you can see some of the details. You can see the reflective lens in the glasses and the highlight on the lips and some of these flyaway hairs coming off the hair. It's little details that really add a lot to the portrait. So this is where I'm going to leave it. So I invite you now to go to your own studio and draw a portrait, either this one or a similar one, just focusing on the features of the face. Don't worry about a background right now and if you do clothing, keep the details nice and simple. Then next month we'll work on another portrait and gradually your skills are going to increase as you give yourself more time and practice in the medium. So that concludes this month's drawing tutorial and I thank you so much for watching. Best of luck to you and your studio.